everyone, I am Naisi Skarya. I am a project scientist in the Department of Center for Continuing Education in IISC. Today we have Dr. Sushila Devi who is a principal research scientist in the Department of CSA. Uh, hello ma'am, welcome. Hello. Uh, can you talk a bit about yourself? Yeah, so uh, I am a principal research scientist in Computer Science Department and I work in the areas of uh, machine learning, deep learning uh, and soft computing basically. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. So, on the occasion of uh, Women's Day, we would like to ask you some questions. So, I'll get started. Sure. So, according to you, what is freedom? What does freedom mean to you? So, uh, freedom obviously means that, uh, you know, you're free, you're, uh, you can do whatever you want. That is what freedom is. But uh, basically, I don't think anybody is completely free. What you have is, you, you'll have some uh, reasonable restrictions on the freedom. Um, so, it's a question of how much restriction you have. So, for example, uh, okay, I mean, since we are talking about women, uh, women do have, you know, some restrictions like maybe you cannot go out after dark or whatever. So, if your uh, sort of father or uh, husband or anyone tells you, okay, you have to come back before it's dark, etc., you should not look at it as, you know, curtailing your freedom in some way. Because they are also telling it to you for your own good. But uh, this much I can say that uh, men definitely have less restrictions than uh, women do. Now coming to a uh, question of work. So in work, uh, uh, obviously with you know some of the problems that uh, women face, uh, I think uh, freedom could also include something like having a level playing field. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, in many cases, you may find that women don't have a level playing field. So, that also sort of curtails your freedom to some extent. As far as IAS is concerned, uh, what I can say is that it's a wonderful place because you have total freedom over here to work on anything you want. So, yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, like some time before, the World Economic Forum released the Gender Gap Index and according to that, India comes 151 in 156 countries based on the economic participation and opportunities for women. Mm -hmm. So, India comes to the last part. Okay. And uh, so, in this scenario, and you have pursued science which is not, like not every woman will be interested in that or not every woman will get that opportunity as yeah. you did. So, what was your motivation in pursuing science as a career? Yeah, so I can say that I just sort of got into it more because of the environment at home. So, in our house, all of us uh, were doing well and uh, I had uh, siblings who were also doing maths and science, etc. So, it just sort of automatically, I just got into it. And uh, of course, uh, uh, also I had uh, ability for maths and science, of course, which is uh, uh, true. But uh, another thing is science is different and, you know, engineering is even more of a problem because you have a very small number of women in, in engineering, basically. Uh, by the flow of things, I just came into uh, uh, this field and uh, you could say that uh, you know, uh, when I was young, it was more like I don't want to study more than anything else. So, uh, I think it just happened on its own. Like, you could call it destiny or whatever you want. I just got into it somehow. Okay. Uh, so, you work in AI, ML and all that. So, uh, I've uh, like read a few articles regarding mm -hmm. the biases that AI systems or ML systems have. And gender bias is one <laughs> of the first yeah. in that. So, it, in the word embedding So, examples. I think the gender bias goes from uh, people to the uh, AI to the system. Systems, yeah. Because <laughs> the people who are creating it are largely men. Right. Yeah. And also, like, this was one example that I got, like, uh, in word embedding examples. Yeah. So, a man is going to be, uh, like... Uh, right, right. Yeah, I've seen to those. a doctor. Right. And uh, women, it could be a nurse. Correct. So, so it, it exists <laughs> in AI systems. Have yes. you faced... Uh, any kind of gender bias in your life or in your career or how have you like, yeah so it? so gender bias is there I mean to quite an extent gender bias is there and especially in India where we have the traditional set up and uh, uh, you know there's the society itself there's a lot of gender bias in the society so it is there and I think uh, you know the precursor to that was 
when you know you have eve teasing and all when you go uh, when you are in college and later when we joined engineering we used to have people tell us that uh, you know we have wasted a seat that uh, you know that yeah that seat should not have been given to us you know that type of thing so obviously these things also are uh, quite uh, annoying you know at that mm-hmm. stage but uh, you know i have actually uh, seen a lot of women and i would just give to like to give two three examples mm-hmm. of of gender bias um which which is just a small part of what really happens <laughs> basically so so one uh, <coughs> could be for uh, especially in fields like us where uh, you you may be the only woman or uh, just one or two women in a group of men etc so so basically i would say something like isolation could be one like mm-hmm. they may just isolate you or uh, they may not want to collaborate with you and and things of that sort and another thing which i've heard very often I mean not that it has happened to me it's just that it's a, it's a general thing which women face that whenever two people are up for promotion if one is a man and one is a woman the there's a high probability that it's the man who yeah. gets promoted and not the women i've heard people telling me examples of this so there are a number of examples of uh, gender bias this is not to say that all men mm, are like yeah. that there are some people who are very supportive when all those things so um, so so gender bias is there and how do you face it uh, it uh, varies on you know uh, a case to case basis sometimes uh, you know if you try to call out something it may have the opposite effect you know mm. and uh, uh you know uh, this type of bias could be anywhere it could be in your boss or it could be in that you know somebody of authority or the or the top person in your organization you know it could be anywhere it's something which you cannot say where it will be so sometimes uh, it may be good thing to just to keep quiet and uh, 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 not call it out because sometimes calling it out may put you into even more trouble mm-hmm. like you know there's a limit to our powers also we cannot do everything uh, but when it is possible we should uh, see what we could do uh, the problem is that uh, you know when we first start having these uh, problems with uh, gender bias we are uh, a little young and you know not very mature to handle these things like as we are now uh, but uh, you know we have faced it uh, from from quite some time and we just do what we can at that uh, particular point in time but the only advice i would give is that uh, you should have a little bit of a thick skin and don't uh, you know give up on whatever you are doing okay just because somebody says something or it doesn't give you enough opportunities or whatever you should just uh, continue working but you should not give give up you know that's the basic idea and of course uh, you know i i have found that uh, you know the advice of uh, people like my father or mm. family etc has really helped in these cases and uh, how do you balance the life and your work because this is like a very important thing correct correct actually uh, this point really shouldn't uh, you know arise because uh, it it should be the duty of everybody to make a family mm-hmm. run you know not only the woman really? of the family or the uh the uh, mother of the children or whatever it is it should be sort of equitable uh, distribution of work but it doesn't really happen that way mm-hmm. like so um, uh, i had a tough time because i did my phd after my two children were born and my son was one and a half years old and my daughter was four and a half when i joined for phd so sure surely i had a tough time in balancing the two and uh, what happens is that uh, there is no answer to that because if you give uh, concentration on one the other one will suffer mm. and uh, it's a very tough thing to balance at that stage uh, only thing i can say is uh, as it time goes on it gets a little easier <laughs> that's all you can say and uh, the idea is that you should just uh, you know keep on doing things just uh, don't give up you know do as much as you can okay so maybe whenever you have a little bit of time time to do something so like they say little drops of water make a mighty ocean you do a little bit every every day or whenever you have the time 
it sort of adds up and the work gets done mm -hmm. somehow. Uh, you know, pertinent to me because I have actually faced a lot of problems. Uh, maybe some women don't face any problem. That's also possible. Like, um, and it depends on the support of the family also. Like in in some cases, if you if the family is helping you out with everything in the house, etc., you may not have that type of a problem. But as of now, this uh, problem is there. And it has to be faced and all I can say is just plod along and somehow it will uh, get better after some time. Like it can, it can't get worse, it can only get better, that's all. Okay ma'am, thank you so much for sharing your experience with us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.